Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to join tonight's European Study Talk. Uh, the Study Talk is a series of uh, online sessions to introduce European University to Taiwanese audience. And tonight, our first feature school is one of the top 100 QSR World University, which is uh, University of Leeds uh, of UK. And it's our pleasure to have Megan from the international office and also Sherry uh, who is one of the Taiwanese alumni um, uh, from University of Leeds. And they will introduce us the programs, how it's like in the campus, what would be life like in UK. So why UK? Why Leeds? Maybe we can discover the answer very soon. So let's welcome them. Hi, Jade. Thank you very much for that introduction. And thank you um, to everyone for joining us today. We hope you find the session useful. And thank you very much to Sherry, um, who's joining us as a, an alumna of the University of Leeds. It's really great for you to be able to hear from Sherry about her perspective. So today's session, I'll speak for about 10 to 12 minutes. We'll try and keep it quite brief about um, just a general introduction to the University of Leeds, give you some key facts um, and things that you might want to think about if you're interested in studying with us. And I'll then hand over to Sherry, who I think is going to do her part of the presentation in Mandarin. Um, and she's going to give her experience as a former student of Leeds. So what was it like to study here? And I think that's the part that hopefully you'll find really useful. So introducing Leeds, if I could have the next slide, please, Sherry. And um, if you're considering studying internationally or in the UK, why might you consider Leeds? And there are three key reasons which are highlighted by the rankings that I've put on this slide for you. So firstly, our academic reputation, Leeds is a top 100 university in the world in the QS rankings, and that's a position that we've held for quite some time now. And we're also part of the prestigious Russell Group of universities here in the UK. So our academic reputation is incredibly strong. Alongside our academic reputation, we also provide our graduates with the skills that they need to succeed in the workplace. Hopefully Sherry is a shining example of this. And that's why we're the fifth most targeted UK university by graduate recruiters. So graduates, big companies really want to work with our graduates. So you have a combination of academic excellence and professional skills alongside a fantastic student experience. And we've been voted third in the UK for student experience in a survey of the students themselves. And again, this is something that I'm sure Sherry is going to touch on in her presentation as well. So my reasons for considering Leeds would be our combination of academic excellence, professional skills and career opportunities, and a great student experience. So the city itself is one of the things that makes our student experience so special. So you might not have heard of Leeds or know that much about Leeds, and um, depends maybe how much you follow football. We do have a Premier League football team now, but we are actually the third largest city in the UK with a population of around 800,000. Leeds is located in the center of the UK, as you can see in this map, and we are very well connected to the rest of the country um, by train. So we're about two hours from London and uh, about three hours from, from Edinburgh in Scotland. So very well connected both nationally and internationally, as well as being served by two international airports. The city is very student friendly um, and Sherry's going to tell you more about um, what it was like to be a student in the city of Leeds as there are four big universities here. So lots of students and lots of things for students to do outside of your studies. And we're also one of the UK's largest centres for business, legal and financial services. So those career opportunities are available within our city. Moving on to the university itself, one of the things that makes Leeds special is our campus. So we are a single campus university. This means that all of our facilities are on one campus, which you can see in the kind of brighter area of the, of the picture at the front there. But we are just a 10 minute walk from the centre of the city of Leeds. Um, and this is something you'll want to think about when you're looking at UK universities, as there are different types of campuses and different um, sort of models, different sizes. Leeds is a big university, but all on one campus, which I think helps. Um, it makes you feel more safe when you're here. It makes us feel like a community and it makes it very easy for you to get to know both the university and the city very quickly, particularly if you're coming for a master's and you just have that one year. So all of our facilities are on this site, our social spaces like our student union, academic facilities like lecture theatres and libraries, and our student gym, The Edge, um, but just a 10 minute walk from, from the city centre. 
Our university was established uh, over 100 years ago in 1904. We were a red brick university, so we've got lots of that traditional red brick architecture that you'll see in, in lots of UK universities. We don't quite have the Harry Potter um, Hogwartsy type halls here. It's a different, a different vibe, but it's a very beautiful campus. And we are a large institution, as I mentioned, we're one of the largest universities in the UK with over 38,000 students at the moment. So that's in the five biggest universities in the UK. And we're a very diverse university with students from over 170 different countries, including every year some lovely students from Taiwan. As well as being large in terms of the number of students, we also offer a wide range of programmes, so over 300 undergraduate and 200 master's programmes. Can I have the next slide, please, Sherry? Um, so whatever you're interested in studying, you will find that there is likely to be an offering at Leeds. And these programmes are taught across our seven faculties or academic departments. So we have arts, humanities and cultures, biological sciences, business, engineering and physical sciences, environment, medicine and health and social sciences. And within each of those faculties, there will be many different schools. So in smaller academic departments and then within each school, there will be different programs that you can choose from. So lots of options. We don't have time today to go into every single program, unfortunately, that would take a while. But if there's a subject you're particularly interested in, please do pop a question in the Q&A and we'll be able to give you more information at the end. One of the areas that's always popular with students from Taiwan is our business school. So I wanted to take a moment to give you a little bit more information about our business school. Leeds University Business School is a triple accredited business school. So this means that we have accreditation from AACSB, AMBA and Equus. My one piece of advice to you if you're interested in studying a business degree is try and find a school that has all three and that's a small number worldwide of which Leeds is one and we're very proud of that. It's a very good indication of the quality of the business school. As well as that, we have um, excellent rankings in business. So we're top 10 in the UK for business management and marketing um, in The Guardian, which is one of the main undergraduate rankings here in the UK. And we offer programmes across international business, management, accounting and finance, human resource management, economics and marketing as well, which isn't on the slide, but we do have master's programmes in marketing as well here at our business school. Outside of your studies, we know that it can be a little bit of a challenging experience moving to the UK. It's been especially challenging for students in the last couple of years um, with the pandemic. But because Leeds is very well set up um, uh, very used to welcoming international students, we've been welcoming international students here for over 100 years, for as long as we've existed. And 25% of our students come from outside of the UK. So of those 38,000 that I mentioned, 25% are international students. So that means we have dedicated international student support um, with things like arriving and settling in. We run English language programmes to help with um, your English language before and during your programme. We run a full welcome and orientation programme for international students. All of our students work with a personal tutor here. So that's, uh, that, that's a really good resource to provide academic support. We have a medical practice right next to our campus. So for any medical needs that you have during your studies, we're here to support you with that. Our Students' Union, which is one of the biggest in the country, provides a range of support to students and is also home to all of our extracurricular activities. So there are over 300 clubs and societies that you can join. And we also run a series of global events to help international students integrate with UK students here. So there's lots of support for students generally and for international students particularly. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, um, but I know that um, lots of students, particularly from Taiwan, are often asking about how a student um, can get work experience during their, their, court, their studies. So this depends on what you're coming to study and whether you're coming to study an undergraduate or a master's. But if you're coming to study an undergraduate degree, you may be able to um, take a placement year or a study abroad year that's available on most of our, um, our undergraduate courses. For master's students, there's lots of support through um, links with industry. This may be placement opportunities, although these are usually optional rather than mandatory at Leeds. Um, but it may also be guest lectures, networking events, careers fairs, mentoring schemes, study tours. There's a real range of ways that we work with industry to really support our students and give you all the opportunities that you need to develop your CV while you're studying with us. We have an excellent careers centre here at Leeds who provide dedicated events and workshops and resources for international students specifically. So whether you're interested in staying in the UK with the post-study work visa, the graduate route visa, 
or returning to Taiwan, we can help you with identifying career opportunities and applying for those opportunities. So I mentioned at the beginning that we are the fifth most targeted UK university by graduate recruiters. So this is um, the reason why it's because of the work that we put into making sure our students have access to these excellent opportunities. One thing that students often ask about is accommodation. So here at Leeds, um, accommodation is guaranteed to international students, including postgraduate students, for the duration of your course. There are a wide range of facilities, costs and locations to suit all budgets and preferences. And everything is included in your accommodation contract. So all of your bills and your living costs, um, like your, your electricity, water and internet, but also your membership to our student gym, which is called The Edge. We also have dedicated postgraduate and undergraduate residences. So we will try to match you with students who are, um, who are living, uh, who are studying at the same level as you. So you'll be studying with other, master, you'll be living with other master's students if you're a master's student. All of our accommodation is single bedrooms and there's a choice between private or shared bathrooms. In terms of fees, um, our, all of our fees are, are displayed on the relevant course pages where you can also see all of the entry requirements and the course content, so the academic content of your course. Scholarships will vary depending on the, um, on the subject that you're interested in studying, but for master's level, these range from £2,000 right up to full fee scholarships. So I would recommend that you look at the master's funding page to, to begin to explore the scholarships available in your subject area. So just uh, two final things from me before I hand over to Sherry. Um, so firstly, undergraduate entry requirements, we would be looking for you for the International Baccalaureate Diploma or A-levels. If you've not studied uh, A-levels or the IB programme, we would need you to take, usually we would need an international foundation year. So if this applies to you or you think it might apply to you, please put a question in the chat um, and um, we'll be able to give you more information. I have the next slide, please. For master's study, which I think is what most of you will be interested in, we would normally need a four to seven year bachelor degree from a recognized university in Taiwan. For most of our courses, we would require a percentage of 75 to 80% overall in your bachelor's degree. Um, but it can depend on the institution that you've studied at um, and some, some institutions we may ask for higher GPA. So feel free to check with us if you're not sure. Some courses require a specific um, background. So if you want to come and study engineering with us, um, you'll need an engineering undergraduate degree. However, some courses can be more flexible. So a lot of our business courses, you don't need a business background, um, a business undergraduate degree. For a PhD, you would normally need a good master's degree as well as your bachelor's with a research experience. And we would often ask for a research proposal as part of a PhD application. And for postgraduate study, we would usually ask for a minimum of 6.5 in the IELTS with six in each component. Um, some courses do ask for higher. So this is the final one from me before I hand over to Sherry who has got the really useful information. So if you'd like to find out more about Leeds after today's session, you can, of course, contact myself and Sherry. But you might also want to contact our current students. So these are current international students who you can contact via the link to Leeds website. So you can send them an email or an instant message. You can set up a Skype call with them. And they also run a lot of online events with really useful information. So they'll share their experiences of being a student at Leeds and they'll give you advice on how to prepare for your studies. Especially at the moment, if you're concerned, if you have any concerns at all about the coronavirus pandemic and how that's impacted students, speaking to these students who've been through that experience, they've all been studying with us in the last year or two, um, would be really useful for you. So that, that's where I'll leave it and I'll hand over to Sherry to, to speak to you more about her experience. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. 好，呃，各位在线上的同学，大家好。那我是有，我是 Sherry。那我是有阴阳留学代办出去的学生。那我现在要跟大家介绍，就是有关于英国，然后有关于 Leeds， 然后再就是有关于我在 Leeds 的一些经验。那先跟大家聊一下，为什么当时就是选择去呃英国。第一个呢，就是接触的教育品质。那因为英国的优质的教育水准啊，他们都是有受到国际认可。像刚刚 Megan 有提到的，就是其实以例子为例啊，它是一个红砖大学之一，那它也是 Russell Group 的成员之一。那 Russell Group 它的概念有点像是呃美国长春的 Ivy League， 嗯，然后再来就是其实例子也是 QS 百大名校。
，然后再来就是呃丰富的文化背景。其实英国是历史非常悠久的一个国家，那它的不管是它的呃博物馆啊，或者是展览啊，它的活动都非常的多，而且大多的博物馆都是免费参观的。还有再来就是，呃，专业的技能学习。其实，呃，英国啊，它都会有最新的趋势技能啊，就让大家在就是在呃工作竞争会有相对的优势。那其实，在利兹大学啊，呃，他们的设备都非常的新颖，而且跟学校更新设备的速度非常非常的快。那他们都会挑就是最好最实用的，就是给我们的学生这样。再来就是留学的性价比非常的高。那物超所值的选择为什么会这么说？因为其实呢，在英国读书学制不一样，所以其实在英国只要一年就可以拿到你的啊 master 了。但是在美国，你可能需要两年的时间。再来就是啊、呃，其实英国就是一个文化大熔炉，所以你可以在这边认识到呃各国的同学，嗯，那就是扩大你的交友圈。再来就是想要跟大家聊一下，就是大家对英国的第一印象。嗯，那再来第一个，我想要讲到就是英国的足球队。其实英国人呢、啊，他们非常认真看待每一场的足球赛。那第一个英国足球协会也是由英国啊，第一个足球协会也是由英国成立的。那再来就可以讲到就是呃，红公车啊，或者是红色电话亭啊，其实都是大家对英国的一些呃 image。再来就是皇室 family， 就是皇室家族。那像啊、呃，前一阵子女王她也才呃，每一年都会在电视上啊，跟就是全英国就是人民就是讲一下她今年的感想啊。那其实这个也是呃，全英国人民都会 focus 的一个活动。再来就是哈利波特。哈利波特像是今年他是二十周年，那其实 J.K. 罗琳本身他本人就是呃英国人，所以其实哈利波特这部小说对于啊、呃、对英国其实带来非常非常多的商机。那他至今他的景点都还是非常的热门，像是在 Edinburgh 的 Elephant Castle 啊，或者是直接在 York 旁边，他就有那时候啊、呃、哈利波特他们就是去买魔杖那个斜角巷，其实就是在呃例子大概二十分钟的车程，就是 York 在这附近。再来讲到就是下午茶，嗯、呃，下午茶也是英国非常有名的一个饮食。那其实呃，在也是在 York 这个地方，或者是在 Harrogate 这个地方，其实下午茶杯提名店就已经就是在附近了。所以同学其实如果想要体验的话，其实都是还蛮方便的。好，后面我要讲到就是例子这一个 city， 它其实是非常非常的便利。它是非常便利的城市。其实留学生刚开始到那边呢、啊，你们想要买的东西，其实到呃必需品，其实到这边都买得到。那像大家可以看到，就是现在这个背景，它是 c o p c a t e Market。那这个 Market 是全欧洲最大的室内市场。再来，大家可以看到左手边这个红色的这个建筑，它是 Bridge Gate Street。那这个 street 呢，它其实就是一个非常舒服的行人徒步区。那在这边呢，你从平价品牌到奢侈品牌，其实都是可以买得到的。然后像呃右手边这个是 Trinity Leeds， 那它也是呃学生很喜欢的一个地方。那它在每一年的九月都会有一个 Student Day， 然后会有一个 Discount 折扣的一些活动。再来就是下面这边有一个，这个是2017年 l e a s 刚开的一个呃 John Lewis， 他是一个呃英国的连锁百货。那他在2017年的时候在这边就是有盛大开幕。再来就是 Victoria Quarter，Victoria Quarter 这边也是有很多的小众品牌，然后呃就是蛮多留学生都会在这边就是做 shopping 的动作。嗯，对，其实综合以上，其实 l e a s 是一个非常方便的城市。学生如果刚开始去的话，你们也可以就是在那边做就是购买，也不用带太多行李到英国当地。好，再来就是刚刚有聊到，其实例子也是本身也是非常就是富有文化的一个城市，像是它是有自己的一个足球场，那像是例子 Arena， 像是有明星来开演唱会都会在这个地方做举行。那像呃 l e e d s Art Gallery 啊，或是 l e e d s City Museum， 它其实平常呢都是免费参观的。在后面介绍啊，最下面我要介绍就是 Leeds Great Theatre， 是我自己啊本人非常喜欢的一个地方，因为呃市面上的呃大家看到一些有名的音乐剧啊，不管是猫啊，或者是 The Phantom of Opera， 它其实都会在这边有机会做演出的。所以其实 Leeds 是呃不管是活动啊，或者是展览啊，其实这边也都是非常的丰富的。好。其实大家都有听过说，呃，在英国啊，食物其实并不好吃。但是其实英呃，例子这个地方其实留学生蛮多的
，所以呢，我们这边有两间很大间的亚洲超市，它有卖很多的罐头啊，或者是调味料。所以其实呃，大家可以在出发前呢，先先学一些就是自己拿手的家乡菜，然后可以在这边就是做就是做你自己喜欢吃的食物。那其实它在特殊的节日啊，例如说冬至啊，或者是元宵，它就会有汤圆。那或者是在端午节啊，它就会有呃肉粽在那边做贩卖。所以对于想家的同学啊，也会有一些过节的，就是感觉这样。那因为刚刚说到，就是亚洲学生比较多，所以呃，其实，在例子啊，我们大概有嗯三到四间的呃亚洲餐厅在市中心。那它有很多选择，例如说是火锅啊，或者是合菜啊，这边呃其实都还蛮方便，而且也都呃蛮多学生会去吃的。再来最下面就是一般的呃超市。那其实呃英国同学他们其实都是中餐以。三明治或者是一杯热咖啡，其实他们就可以就是过了一个中餐这样。如果你对于啊亚洲食品没有那么热爱的话，其实你也可以体验一下就是当地同学的这些呃饮食生活。好，接下来要跟大家介绍一下我自己的一些经验。其实我在读硕士之前呢，我是有先去 Language Center 里面，就是先读了一段时间的呃学前语课程。那这边呢，其实就是帮助自己进入提前进入硕士的课程，呃，例如说就是先认识一下英国腔。其实刚开始去英国的时候，其实是还蛮不习惯的。英国腔其实需要习惯的，而且你还会有比较多充裕的时间可以整理宿舍。然后再来就是累积台湾学生缺少的软实力，像是刚到英国啊，你会需要自己去找你、嗯、的宿舍。然后找完宿舍之后，你可能要啊、呃、注册你的 register 你的 BRP 啊，或者是你还要去学校去注册你的 student card， 还有包含就是呃银行的开户。其实这些都是要很细节，然后去准备资料，不管是上网登录，还是跟学校的学校的就是呃员工啊，他们做一些就是调整这样。其实啊、呃、这些就是解决累积你解决问题的能力，还有你的沟通能力。嗯，然后再来就是呃。像是充裕的了解英国文化，会提早过去呢，也是因为硕士的时间呃比较短，而且压力比较大，所以会觉得是呃，先建议同学就是，例如说先去上六到十周的啊 p r e c e s i o n course， 就是到你也可以到呃附近的郊区走走啊，或者是参加当地就是办的一些一些活动。再来就是它也是一个你开拓国际。人脉的一个好时机，其实像在上 p r e c e s i o n c o d e 的时候，大家其实都是初来乍到，所以他们都会呃，当下的同学都会比较 open mind， 你也会比较容易交到朋友。好，接下来要讲到一下，就是我在硕士的一些经验，先大家跟大家聊一下，就是在英国的一些课程形态。其实我们是两个小时的大讲堂课，呃，老师会跟你沟通一下，就是上课的一些观呃，就是一些课堂的观念。讲完之后呢，你可能会有一个 homework， 那这个 homework 可能不一定是写的，它有可能是一篇很长很长的论文，然后你需要回去做一些 case study。那在你下一堂 similar 一小时课之前，你要完成这项工作。那大家就是，我可以给大家一个 example， 就是大家可以看到第三张照片，他是我 service marketing 的老师，就是他蛮好玩的，就是。诶，上他的课非常印象深刻，因为如果你上他的课，但是你没有做你的 case study 的话，他会用他的就是英式幽默，就是提醒你要要看书这样。所以上他的课，其实大家都会就是很尽情的发挥。其实，在英国读书，你们会呃，学生是会需要大量的思考的，因为呃，英国其实他们习惯的是启发式的教学，他们不会有就是呃正确的答案，但是就是就是让学生尽情的发挥。接下来讲到就是批判性思维，还有就是就是要就是尊重。那其实课堂上会运用到很多 critical thinking， critical thinking 其实在英国文化里面是相当相当的重要。所以如果有打算去英国读书的同学，其实可以建议你先研究一下什么是 critical thinking。那在课堂上，例如说你在 semi 的课程上，就是呃跟同学啊，有可能会有一些意见上的不合啊。你要记得，你要踩稳你自己的观点，但是你要同时尊重其他同学的想法，这才是就是，嗯，英国英国同就是英国老师希望看到的这样。再来讲到就是大家就是最担心的最后一次的论文，其实所有的呃最后一次的 dissertation 都是由指导教授协助完成论文，或者是有些学生会去争取实习的机会。也是会有呃老师啊，或者指导教授带着你们完成的，所以这个不需要太紧张。嗯
上综合以上啊，不管是你在学啊、呃，在课堂上学到理论啊，或者是你的 case study 学到的东西，还有你在英国累积的软实力，所有的这一些元素都是你学习中取得的经验，那你可以在职场上做的运用。接下来要跟他大家聊一下，就是啊、呃、，Taiwanese Society， 就是例子在台例子的台湾同学会。呃，刚刚会建议大家提早去六周或十周去读 p r o f e s s i o n a l course， 是因为那时候你的学长姐可能还会在例子，就是写他们最后的论文。你如果到那时候就是先到例子的话，你有机会可以跟他们拿到二手书，亦或是二手家电家具，他们都会很便宜的卖给你们。那你也可以趁机可以了解一下你们的上课形态，然后或者是 Christmas dinner， 我们每一年都会在呃放假。Christmas 之前，然后会举办一个 Christmas dinner， 然后会在那边玩小活动啊，热络一下大家的感情。再来就是新年的团圆饭，其实新年团圆饭是我们这一届开始的，然后也是希望大家可以聚集起来啊，然后有一些就是呃，大家可能会比较想家吧，然后就大家聚集起来一起吃饭啊，会有一些抽红包的活动啊，或者是说呃玩一些小游戏。再来就是呃不定期的我们会举办一些演讲。像是我在的那一年，那一年我们啊、呃、请到了一个台湾教授，但是他是在例子教书的，那我们就请他来帮我们，就是做一个呃在 dissertation 在写 dissertation 呃的一些技巧，然后他也蛮热心的，就是来帮我们就是讲解了一下。然后再来最重要就是台湾日，其实台湾日就是几个就是呃台湾同学会啊，然后他们会聚召集一些同学，然后我们会在例子大学里面。呃，就是跟其他国外同学介绍台湾这个国家，那有可能是准备一些，例如说珍珠奶茶啊，或者是呃夜市的铜玩，例如说套圈圈啊、乒乓球这些小东西，然后就是跟大家介绍、哦、台湾是一个怎么样的一个国家。然后在最后的八月，我们就会有一个海运的活动，那海运活动就是会有点像是呃，把大家的一些比较重的一些呃私人物品，然后帮你们海运回台湾。那其实综合以上啊，呃，例子的台湾学生会啊，其实是一个非常团结而且很愿意帮助学生的一个社团。好，以上是我在例子的一些经验哈，我对英国的一些想法。如果大家有任何的呃问题啊，可以接洽就是营养留学，亦或是找我们的就是啊、呃、学校大使 Megan。对，那以上是我的分享，这边可以给大家看一下，我今天穿了学校的字，哎，看得到吗？我今天穿了学校的 T 恤。其实例子是一个非常就是热情的学校，所以欢迎大家都是都可以来这边就是当我的学妹。谢谢。Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Sherry, for your sharing here. Oh,、uh, very lovely here. Uh, with the T-shirt. I believe that、like, everyone has or in the, each university we all also have like feature say hoodies um of each school. Nice. All right. So let's welcome the questions from our audience part. Please feel free to leave your message to um under the Q and A box on your Zoom, and I believe Megan or Sherry will be happy to answer your questions here. I think both English and Chinese、uh, questions are welcome. Um, like any program or whether you have uh any plan for any programs, any subject that you're not sure whether your application fit or not, please feel free to ask as well. All right. Uh, the first question is direct to Sherry. Uh, Sherry, would you like to share your experience when you study, uh, language at Leeds? 好，这边的话，呃，其实念语言课程就是呃 ，depends， 就是如果例如说，呃，你可能就是呃，当时考雅思的成绩可能不太够，差一点点，那学校其实就是会呃，给你呃，有条件式的入学，例如说，就是你要完成六周或者是十周的语言课程，然后你才有办法顺利的进入你的硕士学位。那其实如果说你已经呃有呃雅思已经达标的话，那你也可以跟学校要求说你想要读就是语言课程，因为，呃，其实就像我刚刚说的，其实读语言课程呢，可以帮助你第一个比较快进入的状况，尤其是你们可能还会有时差的问题，然后再来就是呃，跟学长姐拿他们的旧书啊，其实学长姐做的笔记对你未来就是考试都是会非常非常有用，因为他们已经综合他们所有的就是精华在那本书里面了，所以其实我们都是一直传承下去的。
所以会建议同学尽量尽早的有办法的话，可以赶快去，就是去习惯一下当地，不管是 British accent 啊，或者是就是呃他们的天气啊这一些的。啊、uh, ，Sherry just mentioned, uh, whether your language, uh, score is、uh, qualified or not, you can also always sign up with the the language courses. I think in elite it's called precession. So yes, we have another question. It's, it's also about the precession. So this audience is interested in the corporate communication and PR program. Believe it requires higher IELTS seven point zero. Uh, in general, in application, what if they don't have this score at that time? Uh, can they, they still submit their application first and later on when they have an updated or qualified score? Can they resubmit their score again, or should they just have to directly sign up for the precession? No. Um. So yes, that is correct for corporate communications, marketing, and PR. We ask for a seven in the IELTS, and、um, so it's a little bit higher. For any of our master's programs, or almost all of our master's programs, you can apply without an English language certificate. That's not a problem at all. So you can apply before you take your IELTS. There are a couple of exceptions, particularly our translation and interpreting programs. For those type of programs where the English language is very important, we would need to see your IELTS before we can assess、um, your application. But for the majority of our programs, you can apply without the IELTS. That's not a problem, and we would encourage you to apply as early as possible to receive your decision as soon as possible and be able、right. to make your plans. So in that instance, you would receive a conditional offer. So it would be conditional on English language, and then once you have your IELTS, you would receive、um, the unconditional offer. Or if you're a little bit below the requirements, you would be able to then apply for the precessional course,、um, as you mentioned earlier. So yeah, it's absolutely not a problem. Perfect.、Uh, what would be the?、Oh, is there any grace period but between the conditional offer and then、um, and the un unconditional offer one? No, so we don't normally have、um, deadlines as such for you to meet the conditions of your offer. And、um, the business schools do have a final deadline in August, and a couple of other faculties have introduced that now、um, in August、um, for you to submit any final、um, documents, meet the conditions of your offer. But that's really more for you、um, as students, so that you've got enough time to apply for your visa and travel, make your travel plans to the UK.、Right. And、yeah. so there isn't. It's not like your offer will be rescinded if you don't submit your IELTS within a month. We don't. We don't do it like that. No. But on the other hand, since、um, just like Sherry, if they would like to sign up for the precession, what would be the? Isn't it a tuition fee? What would be the fee for that? Yeah, so there is an additional fee for the precessional, and、um, so there are different lengths of precessional. So you can either study a six or a ten week precessional, and、um, during this summer before you start your masters in September, right? And、um, And、uh, or if you need to improve your English a little bit more, you um you can study a longer precessional, so like a semester before um before you come to Leeds. So the cost will depend on the length of the program that you choose to take, um and you would apply for your precessional after you've received the offer for your masters usually. Um it is a good idea to take your IELTS early if you can. Having said that, you don't need it to apply for the masters itself. Just because that will help you to plan、um, what kind of precessional, what length of precessional you might need,、um, and and whether you'll need to retake the IELTS to to meet our requirements. So it is a good idea to take that IELTS early. During the application, is any interview required, or are you depend on each program? So it, for the majority of our programs, for our masters programs, no, we don't interview. There are a couple of exceptions. We interview students for the MBA program because that has a work experience requirement, and we want to get to know you a little bit better. And again, a couple of those translation and interpreting programs may have interview、um, uh, components, so that would be listed on the course page. But for the majority of our programs, no, we don't need to interview you. We're able to make a decision based on the information that you provide in the online application form. So、um, UK Star have joined us here today, and they can help you、um, with completing that online application form to make sure that it's got all the information that we need to make a decision. Ah,、uh, when Megan is um talking about the entry to bachelor, uh, undergraduate programs, uh, yeah, you mentioned IB on at level. Yes. What would it be? Yes. Ah,、uh, since it's that new concept for Taiwanese students, would you like to explain them for for our student here? Yeah, so typically, um, so IB when we say IB, um, that's international baccalaureate. So that's an international, um, educational qualification, a high school, international high school qualification, that's recognised by UK universities and lots of universities individually. Um, the uh 
A levels are the British qualifications that mm -hmm. um, British students take here. And um, so if you're studying at an international school, you may be taking one of these types of qualifications mm -hmm. or advanced placement tests, which is the US system. If you've never heard of any of these, it probably means you're not studying any of them because you would know if you would. And it probably means that you need an international foundation year, which means one extra year of study um, before um, you start the undergraduate programme, just to make sure that you're at the same level as the British students who start that programme. So normally our high school is a year longer than in other countries. So it's just to get you up to the same level. If you're interested in undergraduate study, I would recommend that you send me an email and we can chat and um, just let me know what you're interested in studying and what, right. what high school you're studying at the moment. And I can help more specifically with that case. Perfect. Uh, maybe that's a quick reminder uh, to entry uh, undergraduate program. Uh, do they need any language test improvement? So it depends. So sometimes you can meet the English requirements through your international baccalaureate. So if you take an IB, you, that's a great one because you can meet the English requirement from your IB diploma program. Um, if you've taken GCSE English, we would accept that. Um, but if you've not taken one of those, then yes, you would need to take an IELTS. And for our undergraduate programs, it's either a 6.0 or a 6.5 in IELTS, depending on the program. So we have another questions it's fully master program cons uh, consumer analytics and marketing will be i believe this audience would like to know the acceptance rate this is or would you like to know the gpa percentage is this the one from kate that you're looking yes. at yeah so the question is um, if i want to apply for the msc consumer analytics and marketing strategy which is another one of our masters in marketing can you please give a specific percentage or number of how many quantitative courses I need in my undergraduate studies? So for this course, we don't actually ask for a specific um, uh, number of quants courses in your undergrad. We just ask that you can demonstrate a willingness to engage with quantitative subjects. So you don't need maths study or computing study at undergraduate level. We will accept a wide range of backgrounds. You just need to demonstrate in your application that you're willing to engage with quantitative subjects. So that could be through some undergraduate modules. It could be evidenced through your work experience if you've had any relevant internships or work experience. And it could be something that you evidence through the personal statement. So if you have a good GPA overall, 75 to 80%, I would encourage you to, to submit an application and you just need to demonstrate somewhere in the application that you are willing to engage with those quantitative subjects. So it's about showing that you understand what you'll be studying on the course and you're you're interested in that. We don't actually ask for any specific quantity. Perfect. I hope that helps. That also remind me of one of the frequently asked questions. Uh, what will be the uh, evaluation of the application uh, with seats? Yep. Or for example, is any, any entry requirement is more important than others will be yeah. a holistic evaluation of all? That's a good question. And it does depend a little bit on the program, and um, particularly because some of our faculties like business receive thousands and thousands of applications. So the way they have to process them is a little bit different. As a general rule, the first thing we'll look at will be your GPA and your subject background. So we'll look at your right. academic transcript. We want to see the overall GPA, the right subject, if we ask for a specific subject background, and the scores in your specific modules can sometimes be important as well. So that's the first thing. If your GPA is very low, if I'm being quite honest, we might not even be able to look at the rest of your application. Of course. If the GPA is good, then depending on the faculty, we'll go on to look at the rest of the application. So the CV, if you've been asked to submit that, um, the personal statement where you write about your motivation for the course um, and what you expect to gain from it, if you've been asked to submit that. Any additional tests, um, that we ask you to submit. So again, translation tests sometimes come up. Uh, any references, if those are asked, if those are required. So we'll be checking all of those elements and looking to make a holistic um, decision on the application. Some courses are more competitive than others. Um, and, so, and some faculties manage their admissions process in, in, different, in slightly different ways. But it is generally the GPA that we're looking at first. But beyond that, yeah, all the other elements are important as well. Does that help to answer the question? We have the last question here. Okay, so usually uh, a lot of students will spend, spend just one year in, in UK and study there for their uh, postgraduate programs. Uh, do you think will they have enough time to experience the culture, uh, the life, the campus there uh, when they are studying or staying in UK, even with like the high pressure, very intensive course from the 
Yeah, lovely. So I will say work hard, play hard is uh, is uh, my experience in UK. Even those, uh, you know, uh, it's very straightforward in the coast, but uh, you can also have very good experience when you're hunting with your friends or maybe uh, go to outside outdoor and you can release. Yeah. So I will say work hard, play hard and don't waste any time. Yeah. <laughs> Sherry, I think do you... it's about yeah it's about your time management as well so yeah like, <laughs> the UK and yeah and study and and everything else can be a challenge but sure. like like sherry says it's about hitting the ground running not wasting any time when you get yeah. here throw yourself into everything work hard play hard yeah and it is an intense year that one year masters and um, a lot of countries are masters is two years mm. um, so it is an intense year but it's it's a really beneficial one if you if you manage your time carefully get organized early on um, and you will you will have be able to sort of enjoy both we have students who work part-time alongside their studies who do lots of exciting and um, extracurricular so it is definitely possible but yeah it's, it can require yeah. a little bit of organizing get a good mm. calendar <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's but not least uh sherry would you mind to share with us our very last point uh, so is there any challenge that you think is pretty critical at the very beginning or how did you like encounter like, um how did you solve the problem or your, yeah. how did you release your pressure or could you share your tips to strike a balance between your study and to play yeah uh, uh maybe i use chinese with Guys, 老师就是教你的东西，而且学校的设备很好，尤其是就是我们还有录影，就算你有听不清楚的地方，你其实都可以开你的student portal 回去，就是就是看你的recorder这样。对，那就像呃，其实我会就是那时候读书一定会压力很大，你会有一些有一些坎会过不去，但是其实学校会给了你很多support，例如说就是会有language support or just 你可以就是跟你的tutor讲 <笑>我觉得在英国读书这段时间最大的挑战是什么 例如说五题选三题，或者是选几题，然后你就是自由发挥了。其实你也会就是心里就会产生一些很大很大的压力。对，其实我会觉得就是呃认真认真读好书，然后认真就是have fun，然后认真体验英国。其实这一些不管是所